All right, I even got a new camera and tripod. So hopefully demo situation can be a little less, less kind of jiggly with my other tripod situation I had. <clears throat> I feel like it kind of came a little too late. Would have been interesting. Nice to have a better camera and a better tripod three quarters ago, but I am grateful to have them now. Okay, blanching and shocking. So blanching, what is blanching? Blanching is a cooking method. We learn a lot about cooking methods in culinary too, um, but it's a way of cooking food, typically vegetables. I have a bunch of broccoli samples here. So typically vegetables is what we're using blanching for, but not always. Um, but it's a way to cook our vegetables, or as we sometimes say, par cook to kind of partially cook our vegetables because um, we're gonna heat them up later or maybe because we want crunch left in our vegetables. So what do I need for blanching? Well, I have, like I said, some samples here of my vegetables. Uh, I have boiling hot water, salted water. I'll talk about that in a second. I'm eventually gonna talk about my shocking liquid. But what's going to happen is I have 12 samples of broccoli and what I'm going to do is put them all in the water at once and I'm going to have um, I'm going to pull a couple samples out at 30 seconds a minute 30 two minutes and uh, two minutes 30 seconds four minutes six minutes and 10 minutes. One sample I'm going to shock in my shocking liquid one sample I'm not going to shock so when we're done we're going to have side by side samples of the vegetables. Um, within these time increments. And I'll get to that. You kind of see this as this kind of goes along. I kind of want to put this together um, as I'm talking. So we're not sitting here just watching water boil for 10 minutes. But I have my 10 or my 12 samples. Yes, 12 samples. I tried to get them at roughly the same size because if we're doing kind of an experiment where we have vegetables um, that we're taking out of the water from different time increments, I want to have some sort of a control, right? So my control is gonna hopefully be that my vegetables are of approximately the same size. Boiling water. Well, how do I know that it's boiling? Well, it's boiling because I see big, big bubbles. Um, a big mistake I see with um, boiling is that we don't get the big bubbles. We get little tiny simmers or we maybe see some steam and we get impatient and we're like, ah, oh, I see some steam, let's go, I'm ready to go. And I get that, I get impatient sometimes and I think, ah, oh, I'm just ready to cook. But I wanna wait for big, big bubbles. The other thing I want you to notice is I'm gonna put all of these samples in at once and then I'm gonna pull them out at my different time increments that I have. Watch what happens to the water when I put all my samples in. Cause I've got a boil. And then now take a look, it's just 12 tiny samples. They're not really boiling anymore, is, is it? It's coming back, but it, it definitely, the, all those vegetables were not boiling, right? The vegetables were room temperature, came out of the refrigerator. So my water kind of stopped, which is fine. So whenever you're boiling something, you always want to account that it's going to um, it's going to stop boiling for a second, right? And it depends on kind of like the load that I have in there. Maybe I have um, maybe I have a whole box of pasta. I'm trying to boil a whole box of pasta. It's going to um, it's going to take a little bit longer for that to come up to a boil. But now we can see that we're back up to a boil we're good to go. So like I said, with my time increments, I already pulled out my first sample. So I have one sample that I'm going to be blanching, which is just gonna be cooking in salted boiling water. My other sample, I'm going to put in my shocking liquid. Well, what the heck is my shocking liquid? 
And why am I doing that? My next sample is gonna come out here in six seconds. So let me get this out of here. Get this out of here. So my shocking liquid is ice water. Ice and water, that literally all it is. So what's happening with my ice water is that I'm going from extreme hot, my boiling hot water, right into an ice bath. We call this an ice bath. And it's a good balance between ice and water. Um, if I had just ice in the bowl, I wouldn't really be shocking my food. Um, it would just be sitting on top of ice. And if I just had water here with maybe two ice cubes, it wouldn't do the job either because I don't have enough ice here to keep my water cool. The thing with an ice bath is that I want to completely submerge whatever it is I'm trying to cool or stop the cooking on completely in that ice bath. I want it to be able to really swim in there, really be submerged and really cool down. Because like I said, when I'm cooling this down, I'm putting, I'm going from hot water to ice water. Hang on, getting my samples all set here is I'm stopping the cooking process. So I go from hot, I go to cold, and I'm stopping the cooking process. So same process if you've ever cooked hard boiled eggs. Hard boiled eggs, sometimes if you do this at home, you'll go from boiling water, get your eggs boiling for the, the magic time that you do, and then you might put it in ice water. Well, what's happening with the ice water, or you'll run uh, cool water over it. What we wanna do is we wanna stop the cooking process. Even though I remove, this item from the hot water, the hot boiling water, it's still going to continue to cook. Even though this isn't in the water anymore, it's still, it's still hot, right? It's still gonna take some time for that to cool down. Well, I've kind of fixed that step by ice bath. Ice bath stops the cooking process. It halts all the cooking and it kind of preserves that doneness of vegetable in this ice bath. So depending on what I'm doing with my food, I may want a, a crunchier vegetable or maybe I don't want a crunchier vegetable. Um, maybe that's personal preference. Cause I like, um, I like broccoli just fine. I, but I don't really like raw broccoli uh, and I don't like overcooked broccoli. Uh, but what I do like is broccoli that's been blanched and shocked, and it still has a little bit of a crunch left to it. So I prefer the broccoli that's been cooked for, I don't know, three or four minutes, depending on size, right? If these, my samples are gonna be big, it's gonna take more time. And then I'll shock it, or if I wanted, maybe I'm eating dinner, maybe I just kind of blanch it for three minutes, put it on my plate nice and hot. I don't need to blanch it, or I don't need to shock it. So, but I like my broccoli to have a little bit of crunch to it. Personal preference, maybe some people just prefer raw broccoli. Maybe people like, maybe people like broccoli, um, that resembles baby food. <laughs> Some people say that when their broccoli gets overdone, they don't like it because it's um, too overdone. It tastes kind of like baby food. It's really, really mushy. When we eat food, um, texture has a big play into things, right? Um, it's not always just that, oh, it's good, it's bad, it's perfectly seasoned. Texture plays a big, big part in what we eat. So if, again, we're desire something that's a little bit crunchier, we're gonna want it to be crunchier. So we want to be able to shock our food. Another great thing that happens is I get this beautiful, beautiful green color on my vegetables when I shock my food or when I blanch and I shock my food. Um, and that we'll talk about when we get to all of our samples together here, because the more I keep things in my water, I don't know if you can see the, how green the water's looking, the camera's not really doing it justice. The, the water that's here in front of me is awfully green compared to the water I see on the screen. Um, but some of that green is coming out of my vegetables, but I want it to stay in my vegetables. I want my vegetables to be nice and green. Another tip about um, blanching and shocking is that um, when I do shock my vegetables, that's submerged in there, I'm only shocking for as long as it's going to take for that vegetable to cool down. 
when you get vegetables that you're shocking, don't leave it in the water like overnight and don't leave it in there for several hours. You only wanna leave it in there for as long as it takes for it to cool down. Because what happens is that broccoli starts to take on some of that water because it's just sitting in water. It really has nothing else to do. It's gonna start taking on the water. So the vegetable gets what we call waterlogged. And then the vegetable starts to lose its flavor and just kind of taste kind of bland and just kind of blah because it's been sitting in water too long. It's not very tasty. So when you do shock vegetables, do make sure that you get it out of the water in a timely fashion and it's not sitting there overnight and it's not sitting there for hours on end. Again, depending on the size of your vegetable, it could be five minutes or eight minutes, but again, you want to know that it's cool and that would work. So another example of blanching is let's say I'm making um, a crudite platter, a vegetable platter, and I have a giant platter of vegetables that I want to um, have as an appetizer, but I have you know raw carrots, which are delicious, raw uh, celery, uh, but I also wanna put on there some uh, broccoli and asparagus but I don't really want my broccoli and asparagus to be raw. Cause like I said, I mentioned earlier, like I don't really like raw broccoli. I like it cooked. Um, I certainly don't like raw asparagus. I think raw asparagus is, ugh, I, don't, I don't know who's ever eaten raw asparagus. Anyway, um, but I wanna cook it. So let's say I'm making a vegetable tray. So what I would do is I would take my asparagus and maybe my broccoli. I would get some hot uh, boiling salted water. I would put my asparagus in my uh, boiling water. I would blanch it to my desired doneness. And then I would go ahead and shock it and then keep it in the shocking liquid until it's cool, take it out, dry it off. And then now I have this beautiful tray of raw and par cooked vegetables. So if I were to take just my asparagus out and not shock and just leave it on the counter, it's gonna continue to cook. So the way that I would know that my asparagus is done, I usually have to test it with my hands and feel it or I have to eat it. So a lot of people ask me, like when we're cooking pasta and we're like blanching, a lot of people say, can you come see if my pasta is done? No, I cannot come see if your pasta is done. I can come taste if your pasta is done. Um, same thing here. I can taste this. I can taste and see if it's done because I want to taste and I get the mouthfeel for the texture, right? Or I can snap it in half, see if it still has some crunch to it. So once I get to my desired doneness, I want to get into the ice bath. If I don't put it in the ice bath and I just leave it on the counter or if I go throw it in the refrigerator, it's just gonna continue to cook. It's gonna steam, it's gonna continue to cook, it's gonna overcook. So when I pulled it out and it had a perfect snap and I skipped the ice bath process, by the time it's cool and ready to eat, it's gonna be, it's not gonna have a snap anymore. It's gonna be soggy, it's gonna be overcooked, it's gonna be stringy, it's not going to be very tasty at all. So like I said, Shocking stops the cooking process. Stops the cooking process, leaves that doneness right where you um, left it. The other thing about blanching and shocking is mise en place. When you're ready to shock, whether it's hard boiled eggs, broccoli, asparagus, what have you, have your ice bath ready. Because what the vegetable doesn't wanna do and what the vegetable doesn't know is that your ice bath isn't ready, right? So like I said, once I pull this out of the water, I want to cool it. I want to stop the cooking process. It doesn't stop cooking because I've just removed it from the hot water. It's going to continue to sit here and cook and cook and cook and cook. The vegetable doesn't know that I want it to stop cooking. So if I pull that out and I think, oh man, I really want to cool this off, but I have to go now I have to go find a bowl and now I have to go find my ice and now I have to go find my water and now I have to go do this it's you're going to have overcooked vegetables. So you really, really want to think about um, your mise en place, even something simple like this, blanching and shocking. It seems kind of simple, but you really, really want to think about your mise en place. It's cooled here, a little bit drier. And then now that I'm done, so that was all of that. Um, even if I did take all of these in one swoop and kind of put them all in there, I'd still have ice left. So some people kind of don't put enough ice in because they're like, oh, I'm just going to have it left over anyway. I'm going to throw it down the sink. It's better to have the perfect balance of water and ice. Like I said, if I had um, 
not enough water and just too much ice. Like an example like this. It just sits on top of the ice. It doesn't do anything, right? I want to make sure that that vegetable is submerged and swimming in that ice. So I want a good balance of water and ice. So make sure that you have a good balance. Your items are gonna be able to be submerged and completely covered in ice water to stop the cooking. All right, so let's take a look here. All right, so now that all my blanching and shocking or not shocking is done, some examples, let's take a look at what we have and kind of evaluate what we have here. So two samples, remember one sample was shocked. I shocked all of these, these all went to the ice bath. These did not. These are cooling or are still cooling because I just pulled that one out. I have 30 seconds. So these samples were in the water for 30 seconds. These samples were in the water for a minute 30, two minutes and 30 seconds, four minutes, six minutes, and 10 minutes. So let's take a look at the 30 seconds. 30 seconds, beautiful bright green. Let's get a, a look at raw broccoli, right? Then I have blanched and shocked broccoli. Broccoli's pretty. I mean, I get some people may not really like broccoli, but um, you know, it's pretty, it's nice and green. It's kind of fun to look at. looks like little trees. But once I blanch my vegetables, see how the difference of this beautiful, just vibrant green comes out versus this kind of dull green. So that's one thing to notice is that just compared to raw broccoli, that blanched broccoli looks a lot better. It's beautiful green, really bright. So this guy was shocked, still nice and firm. Oh, there's a little crunch, not as loud as I thought it would be, but there's a little bit of crunch there, still nice and firm. For me, this would probably be close to perfect um, because it has some crunch, but it's not necessarily raw. So this guy was also in the water for 30 seconds, but it sat there, it sat on the countertop. So it's a little bit more flimsy and doesn't have as much crunch. Then we go to a minute and 30 seconds. So this was in the water minute 30 and an ice bath. It's getting a little bit wigglier, but this one is a little bit wigglier still because it just sat on the counter. It didn't get the proper stopping of cooking. And of course these samples would be different, right? If um, all my broccoli was this size, right? I'd, be, I'd get a lot different reaction if my broccoli was a lot bigger, right? I tried to get some small portions here so we could see a big, big difference between 30 seconds and 10 minutes. Two and a half minutes. I'm starting to get really soft here. This guy was bland or shocked. So this is starting to get really, really quite soft. I'm really, really losing some crunch here. And then this one was not shocked. So even more overdone with this one. Four minutes. The other thing that I'm noticing is as I'm getting down to time, it's starting to just, ugh, the tops are getting a little mushy. I can peel that off really, really easy. I'm starting to get that kind of like baby food consistency. Whereas up here, it's really hard. It's a lot harder to pull those off. I really have to pull those off. Whereas when I come down here, they just kind of come off in my hands. So that one was shocked. Let's see the one that wasn't shocked. It already is falling apart. It's even softer. The, the stock, the thicker part is really just falling apart. So then six minutes, I can only imagine it's just gonna get worse from here, right? The stock that's usually the hardest part is disintegrating. I can smush it. I definitely have the baby food kind of texture here. This one sat out, this one didn't even get uh, shocked. So this one is really just falling apart in my fingers. Wash my hands, rinse them anyway. Now 10 minutes, so 10 minutes, and he went into the ice bath. The other thing that happens once they start to get overcooked, they start to hold more water. I can squeeze the water out of this guy 
Whereas this one, it's going to drain a little easier. I'm not, I can't squeeze as much water out of this. And maybe it's also because this isn't overdone. And when I squeeze it, it still holds its shape. Whereas this one, I squeeze it and it turns into nothing, right? But it's definitely holding a lot more water. So that one was shocked. For, that was in there for 10 minutes. And now let's take a look at, this was unshocked and it's still warm. I can still feel that this guy's warm. So of course, super, super mushy. This would be super unappealing to eat. Um, not a lot of crunch, not a lot of mouthfeel, um, disintegrating everywhere. So they're all nice and green. They start to look a little less green the further down the line you go. So the other thing to keep in mind is that the longer I leave it in the water, like I said, my water here, it doesn't really do it justice. You can see that it's kind of yellowish kind of green, but the, the camera is not picking up how green that water really is. Getting broccoli all over my new camera. So as, as I continue to cook, that green color is left inside my pot of water. I don't wanna leave the green color in the pot of water. I wanna leave the green color on this first or first few examples here, right? Where I have this beautiful, beautiful green, it stands out. Can you imagine what it would look like next to a really nice bright uh, carrot and then maybe some cool asparagus. It's again, really, really bright. So blanching and shocking, it sounds like a simple cooking method, but we wanna start with boiling water. Make sure that that water is boiling, not just simmering, not just smoke or steaming. We want to make sure that that's boiling. So that'd be step one. Let's go back maybe. Salted water. Why did I salt the water? Why must it be salted? I want salted water, not because it makes my water boil faster. That's like an old wives tale. A lot of people say, oh, it makes your water boil faster or makes this or makes that. I don't know. The only reason I'm adding salt when we've talked about salt in quick breads and in yeast breads, we talked about how salt enhances flavor, kind of adds flavor, enhances flavor to our food. This is the only time in that water I have to season this ingredient. I'm seasoning it, that's all I'm doing. I wanna salt that water so I can make sure that this broccoli tastes like the best broccoli you've ever tasted because it has salt on it. This is raw broccoli. To me, again, it doesn't taste very good, because when I blanch it, it has a different texture, plus I can salt this. This has salt in it. Because it sat in that boiling water, it's going to just naturally absorb some of the water that it's in, which has salt in it. So now I've seasoned this. Same concept applies for pasta. Pasta is just naturally bland. It doesn't have a ton of salt in it. But if I cook it in salted water, that pasta absorbs that water that it's been cooking in, which should have salt in it, maybe some other aromatics or flavor components if you want to, but that's the only time I have to season that pasta. I could add a flavorful sauce on top of that pasta or maybe a flavorful cheese sauce on top of this broccoli, but I'm not gonna get a perfectly balanced dish if all parts of that dish aren't seasoned independently. So even if I just wanna do a simple dish of broccoli with a cheese sauce, I could blanch my broccoli and have broccoli that has some crunch into it. And I can have a delicious cheese sauce, but if my broccoli isn't independently seasoned and paired with a perfectly seasoned sauce, I tend to get some unbalancing happening in my plate. So I want to season everything separately and then put it together. So think about a plate of like meatloaf, mashed potatoes and broccoli with cheese sauce. My meatloaf should be seasoned beautifully. If I'm gonna put a sauce on top of the meatloaf, that should be seasoned to perfection. My mashed potatoes should be seasoned to perfection. My broccoli should be seasoned. My cheese sauce should be seasoned. Everything should be seasoned independently. And then when it comes together in a dish, you have a perfectly balanced dish of seasoned items. Not to say that things are like, oh my gosh, there's so much salt in here. It shouldn't be that way. But each component itself should have a perfect amount of seasoning. Some of it's a lot of salt, some of it's a little salt. Yes, with that salted water, I had to add a lot of salt to that water. Yeah, maybe a two, two tablespoons, I'd say, to get that water to be seasoned enough to season this because it was only in there for a minute and a half, 30 seconds. So that water should be nice and salty because this isn't gonna stay in there for very long. So 
keep that in mind about seasoning food, seasoning food independently, all that good stuff. I don't want to leave it in my ice bath for very long because again, that ice bath, it's going to start to absorb the water from that. And that's just ice water. It's pretty bland. Um, there's no salt in there. So the longer I keep vegetables in the ice bath, I'm not going to have things perfectly seasoned. The vegetables are going to start to be compromised. They're going to start to get waterlogged. They're going to start to get soft. They're going to start to get brown. They're not going to be very tasty. All right. So I think that's our crash course with broccoli, um, with blanching and shocking, that is, blanching and shocking. So like I said, blanching, boiling hot water, and the time depends. The time depends. The, the vegetable you have, the item that you have, the size of it, because again, like I said, if my broccoli was all this size, maybe 10 minutes wouldn't be so bad, right? Because it would it's a lot bigger. And then again, your um, desired doneness. Another way that we use um, blanching and shocking in the restaurant um, is think about like um, you go to Olive Garden and you're getting chicken fettuccine and you want broccoli inside of your chicken fettuccine. That broccoli that goes inside your chicken fettuccine, when you've ordered it, that broccoli is probably already in this state. This state. It's already been trimmed, it's already been blanched, and it's already been shocked. So that when the, the cook gets your order, all he has to do is heat your pasta because your pasta is probably already par cooked, blanched and shocked, and your sauce is already done. So all he has to do is get a pan, put some sauce in it, reheat it, get your pasta hot in it, and then get your broccoli in it and just reheat it. So everything is kind of a reheating process versus a cooking from scratch process. Because if you think of how many people Olive Garden serves each night and how quickly they can turn tables over, they have to have some mise en place. They have to have some vegetables and some items pre-cooked or par-cooked to make it happen in a, like such a timely fashion, right? You don't want to be sitting there for hours on end being like, where's my food? That's how we get food out to customers so fast. It's because we've par-cooked things. We've blanched things. We've shocked things. Um, we've taken food just up to the, the next level to where it just needs to go onto a plate, essentially. So that's a lot about, again, this could be mise en place, right? This just blanching and shocking vegetables, that's a form of mise en place because maybe I'm um, making meatloaf and I'm making my mashed potatoes and I want to be able to just put these, dunk these into hot water for about 10 seconds to refresh them and get them hot. And then boom, I've got dinner ready to go. So lots of different applications for it. And it seems simple. Like I said, keys are boiling salted water, ice water. Really, really simple. Um, but it can really be kind of messed up again if we're not using our mise en place. Think about ice water. We want our ice bath ready to go. We want our vegetables ready to go. Um, those types of things. So tomorrow we are going to review for the final. That's on Tuesday. So we're gonna do a Kahoot style review for um, the final. So that's what tomorrow is. Tomorrow is Kahoot review for the final. All the questions that are on the Kahoot review are the same questions that are on the final. So once you do the Kahoot review, you'll have seen the final and it's literally the same questions. They're also the same questions that are on any other test you've taken and on the bell work that you've done. So um, everything should be repeat information. But that's what I have for today. Like I said, I just wanted to show you a quick thing about blanching and shocking. We do a lot more cooking methods with culinary too. Um, so if you're interested in a lot more cooking methods and things like that, um, we do that in culinary too. Um, that's what I have for today. So of course, take a look at grades. You have questions, you have comments, concerns, those types of things. Uh, hang out, email me. Um, don't uh, ignore your grade to the last moment. Um, but other than that, I will see you guys Friday, tomorrow. Enjoy some sunshine that's probably out there.